Hi, everyone. What are we going to do today? Today, we're going to focus on statement of cash flow. But how are we going to do that? We're going to do a review of all the transactions we started in the second session. Every transaction, we'll do it again. We'll see how it's affect balance sheets in income statement. And then we'll focus how it changed the statement of cash flow. In order to understand the statement of cash flow, I will start the session today by describing the statement of cash flow, the structure of the statement of cash flow, how it's being built. And by the way, it's probably the hardest way to teach it. And from the student point of view, it's probably the hardest way. I haven't seen many people teaching it in this way. I'm gonna make a statement and remember that you should know it by heart. And as, over time, when you become to be a really good finance consultant, if you choose this career, statement of cash flow, it's nothing but a difference between two balance sheets of a company. I repeat it and explain. Again, statement of cash flow, every line in the statement of cash flow is based on the difference between two balance sheets of the company. The balance sheets in the beginning of the period and the balance sheets in the end of the period. You take the difference, you can start building up the statement of cash flow. It doesn't make sense to you now. In the end of the session, you will. And when you watch the video again, it will make a lot of sense, okay? But let me be specific, okay? What do I mean by a difference? If you look at the balance sheet, when we started the session last time, we had the balance sheet was totally empty. This is really the way the company start. Every company start with zero, nothing. We have nothing in the company. We just established it. If we haven't done anything during the year, the end of the year also would be all zeros because we haven't done anything. But if the only things we have done was issuing equity, we click on this one here, then issuing equity we already have seen last time, they would have more cash in the bank account of the company and we have equity. Remind you, the balance sheet has assets, liabilities, and equity. In the assets, we have current assets and long-term assets. Current assets are short-term assets, meaning they are cash or anything that's going to be turned into cash in the next year. I really should say period, but for us, we'll stick to a year for now. Long-term assets, they are assets that the company are buying that are going to last in the company more than a year. Long-term uh, uh, liabilities. Liabilities, we have current liabilities. There are liabilities I'm going to pay next year. Long-term liabilities will be liabilities we're going to pay more than a year. And then we have the equity. Here I made the first transaction. I issued cash. I, I issued stock and I collected cash. We learned that last time. No effect on the income statement. Is there effect on the statement of cash flow? To know and understand the effect, okay? We will have to understand what is a statement of cash flow. I just made a very robust statement. I want to explain it, okay? I'm going to zero it again. And I said, statement of cash flow can be constructed by calculating the difference between two balance sheets. The beginning of the year, this is the way the company started. We're using a simple company we just established. So the beginning, it's really everything's a zero. The company didn't exist in the beginning of the year. All the transactions will affect how the balance sheets will look like in the end of the year. Therefore, when the end of the year come 
and I take a difference in the cash, we'll see there will be a number. That number will show somewhere in the balance, in the statement of cash flow. The difference in the inventory, it will show up somewhere in the statement of cash flow, et cetera, et cetera. That's number one you should know. Most of places you study statement of cash flow, they skip that sentence, they don't emphasize it enough, and they really should. Okay, and that's why I started teaching statement of cash flow, emphasizing statement of cash flow is constructed by a difference in the balance sheet between the beginning of the year to the end of the year. That's point number one. Point number two about statement of cash flow. Let's look at the structure. Structure have three main sections. Operation, investment, and financing activities. And interestingly, the bottom line, look at the bottom line of the statement. It's gonna be change in cash. Of course it is zero now, because if the company haven't done anything, they didn't issue anything, didn't do anything, beginning of the year is cash is zero, end of the year cash is zero. So this last line here will be always the difference between this number and this number. That's the change in cash. When I teach corporate valuation, I always ask, is that an important number? I won't get into that now, you're not ready for it. But it's a very important number on one sense. and the second sense, it's a meaningless number. And we will see in the future. Let's focus on the structure of the statement of cash flow. Operation. We have cash from operation. It's a very important number. This is saying how much cash the company is really generating during the year from actually doing their business. We took the example of buying and selling shoes. How much cash, not profit, cash you actually generate? The second part is how much out of this cash have you used and you reinvested in the company? That's cash from investing activities. Usually you will see a negative number. Negative number means you took some of the, of the cash you generated and you reinvested in the company. So that's why it's negative. This one most likely should be positive. Otherwise, while you're doing business, you should have a positive cash. You're generating cash for the business. And this, you're using the cash to buy buildings, to buy machinery, to buy all those stuff. So using cash. So whatever left from the operation and after you subtract whatever you invested, you could give it to the shareholders, the owner. So when I look at financing activities or cash flow from financing activities, it could be a negative, could be a positive. If it will be a negative, it means that the number that I generated, part of which I bought buildings, I bought machinery, part of which I gave it back to the owner. And whatever left stayed in the bank account of the company. So let me repeat it. It's very important as introductions. Statement of cash flow has three major sections: operation, investment, and financing. Operation tells me how much cash I'm generating from the operation of the business. Second, tell me how much of that cash. I'm using to invest in the company. Buildings, machinery I'm buying for the company, blah, blah, blah. And third one, how much I'm distributing to the owner, and I should really say also to the debt owners, okay? But we will be more specific during the session today. Whatever left 
will increase the cash in the bank account. Or could be many other scenarios. We'll talk about them later on, but this is classical good stuff. So let's start and start understanding the whole things and do a review. First transaction we talked about last time. Let me make sure everything is clean. First transaction we issued equity. When we issued equity, we just built a company. We issued 50,000 worth of equity. We saw the cash went up by 50,000. From zero, it went to 50,000. We said at the same time in the equity, we have more equity because this is belong to the owner of the company. Equity is how much the owner have invested in the company for now. We'll modify the definition as we go along, more precise, or distinguish between book value to market value, and et cetera, et cetera. For now, we raised 50,000, the money went to the bank account of the company, and we say it belongs to the equity. And again, total assets, as we saw before, equal to the total equity plus liability. No effect on the income statement, remember, but is there an effect on the statement of cash flow? Definitely yes. Remember, what did we say about the change in cash? Change in cash always, always will be equal to this difference. Oh yes, the difference was 50. Here it is, exactly 50. But what really happened in the company? Did we do any operation? None. So we had, didn't generate any cash. Have we took some cash and bought buildings or anything? No, we haven't. The only thing is we just issued cash. We issued stock, sorry. And we got some cash. And so that's what the financing activities is about. We created cash in our bank account because we really issued shares. That's why we said increase in common stock. Increase in common stock, it means the reason we have more cash is because we issued stock. And the statement of cash flow is wonderful for that purpose. He explained to me how I ended up having 50,000 in my cash account, in my bank account. It because we issued common stock. So the third category, financing activities in this example, showing me it is a positive. My financing means dealing with the shareholders and we will see dealing with the bank or the debt holders, whoever give loans to the company. In this example, we raised 50,000 and that 50,000 went to the bank account of the company and that came because we issued common stock. Let's go next transaction. Second transaction, we click on it. We issued, we took a loan from the bank of 600 and we saw we have more bank, more cash in the bank. More cash in the bank, it has two resources, two sources. One is because we issued stock to the owner, they gave us 50,000 and the bank gave us 600,000. 600 plus 50, give me 650 change in the cash. Let's look at it. Statement of cash flow. 650, that's the change in cash. How is that happen? It's from financing activities. I financed the company. I raised 50,000 by issuing common stock. And I raised 600 because I increased the loans I took. In this case, I increased the, 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 the long-term debt. So I increased the long-term debt by 600. I raised equity and therefore I have 650 cash. So you can see already, I wasn't lying when I said every line in the statement of cash flow 
is a difference between the balance sheets. Hey, how did I get the 650 here? Hey, very simple, it's this difference. How did I get this 50,000? Very simple, it's this difference. How did I get this 600? Very simple, it's that difference. You will see it always will be like that. Some people said, okay, if you have all this information in the balance sheet, why do you need this one? And here is the reason. Because when you see the numbers here, it's just clearer, easier to analyze. Theoretically, all the information that you have in the statement of cash flow, you're already having the difference in the balance sheet. The only reason we do the statement of cash flow, it's much clearer. This is really much clearer. We raised money from what we call them the investors. Why do we call them investors? See, they give money to the company to start operating. The owner, they give 50,000. The bank is really investing in the company. He's giving loan to the company. They are together giving us 650. That's why in the statement of cash flow, we look at financing activities is how do we finance the company? That's in the simple way. It's getting more complicated as we do more transactions. But that's the basic idea. Let's go to the next one. Okay. Before I, I, I do that, even I mention again, those two transactions has no effect on the income statement. No effect on the income statement, no effect on operation. You will see. We haven't bought any things. No effect on the long term assets. There will be no effect on the investing. I will see the connections as go along. I will repeat myself many times because it's a little hard first time. Okay, let's go to the next one. Buying inventory, click on it. Remember we said we bought the inventory for credit. The suppliers gave us credit. So we said the inventory, it's an asset, we have 800. So our current asset is higher now by 800. Total as current asset is 1450. Why? We have cash, we have inventory. Hey, how did we come with that one? Let's look at it. We have, we have 600 loan from the bank, but the suppliers gave us a loan. It's a short term loan, but it's still a loan. Okay, and we raised 50 from the owner. So total equity plus debt is for 14.50. Total asset, 14.50. No surprise, the accounting identity still hold as we talked about it last time, okay? Let's look at now, let's look at the, let's look at now statement of cash, a, a income statement, no effect. We haven't sold any things. Is there any effect on the statement of cash flow? Definitely yes. That's a little hard one. Okay? But what really happened? What really happened? Okay? Let's see what happened. We don't see any things. No effect. We bought inventory, had no effect on the statement of cash flow. How come? We do see inventory did increase. And Evo said, if inventory increase, I should see a line in the statement of cash flow. I almost lied. No, I didn't lie. Because in the statement of cash flow, we do one more thing. Okay? Not every line, sometimes we combine several lines. If you notice, the inventory went up by 800. On the other hand, the current liabilities went up by 800. No change in the cash. So no surprise, no change in the cash. But I would expect, some do by the way, some do. The way I constructed the statement of cash flow, it's one of two methods. Some do the statement of cash flow and they put all the detail. They will put inventory in the operation. And then you will see inventory went up by 800. And they will put the current liabilities or account payable as we'll see in the future 
they will see a line. But those two lines will be in the operation and they cancel out. Let me explain the term. There is a, a line here called minus increase in working capital. That's one of the hardest part that students have a hard time to understand, okay? And in fact, I might give it an exercise to you guys as a senior uh, software engineers to rebuild another component, which put all those details, but the end results will be the same. You can break working capital to all the component. What is working capital? So I want, I'm going to define it. And please write it down. It's very important. Working capital is the difference. Let me write it down for you. I think that would be important. Okay, let me make it just. What is working capital? That's equal to current asset. And please pay attention, not including cash. Fair enough? Yeah. Yeah. Working capital is current assets, but the current assets include cash, so we remove the cash from there, minus current liabilities. Okay, that's working capital. If you take the current assets, not including cash, you subtract from it the current liabilities, you get the working capital. So what does it mean increase or decrease in working capital? How working capital can go up if the current assets will go up? Then working capital will go up, correct? Yes. Right? If current assets will go up, working capital will go up. If current liabilities goes up, working capital will go down. Have what happened if current assets and current liability goes up, both of them go up by the same amount, no change in working capital, correct? One more time, if current assets and current liabilities go up at the same amount, there will not be any change in working capital. And what, write it down too. If there is no change in working capital, there won't be any change in cash. My bank account will not have any effect. And that's exactly the example I just showed you now. Let's go back to the example. What happened here when we bought inventory? My inventory went up, that's current assets. Current assets went up by 800. At the same time, we got a loan from the supplier. Current liabilities went up by 800. What happened to working capital? No change. Therefore, when I look at the statement of cash flow and I look at the increase in working capital, there is no change. There's no change. That's why we don't have any change on the cash. There's nothing affected cash. Only current assets went up and current liabilities went up. No change in the cash. No supplies, no change in the working capital, no change in the cash. Students have a hard time with that one. Please review this video again, over and again. You know, watch it even two or three times, and then it will be clear. It's very confusing in the beginning. Is there any effect on the income statement? No, as we saw last time. We just bought something. We bought some shoes. We put it in the warehouse. The supplier didn't ask for any money, which is all the money. So nothing really happened, I didn't make any money. The next transaction is a hard one. 
It's a hard one from many perspectives. And we'll go over it again. We now sell some of the inventory, but not only we sold, we didn't collect all the cash for the sale. We say, gave some credit to some customers. So let me click on it, okay? And remind you, we sold inventory cost us 791. That's the cost of that inventory for us. By the way, if you forget, you have the description again for every one of them in the bottom here, the whole description right here. Explain it beautifully, okay? But we're really interested to see how it does affect all the three now. So stage number one, what happened in the income statement? We sold that inventory for 1274. It cost us only 791. Therefore, we made what we call gross profit. In this case, since we didn't account for any other expenses, for us, gross profit and a net income is the same. We will distinguish between those two today. I'll get deeper into that. And next session, definitely we we'll even dive into the meaning changes over time with those accounts. For now, it's the same because we don't have any other expenses yet. Okay, so gross profit, it's the definition for gross profit is revenue minus cost of goods sold. Many times you might see companies put depreciation separately. Most of the time they don't. Okay, many times they don't. So they're combined inside the cost of goods sold. For now, I distinguish those two so you can really see where depreciation is supposed to be. And in future sessions, we we'll talk more where depreciation might appear. For now, we just, that's enough for us. So revenue, we saw choose, total 1274. How much did it cost us? 791. Therefore, the difference is our profit. Okay, we should expect that difference to be the increase in cash, but that wasn't the case. It wasn't the case, why? Because we gave some loan to some of the, our customers. Some of the customers didn't pay it. They're gonna pay next year. 7,000 gonna pay next year. So we didn't collect the whole amount. We collected only 1274 minus 7,000, okay? That will be 1267, okay? As we saw last time, one more time. We didn't collect the whole amount. We only collected 1274 minus seven. That's the amount that increased the cash. What happened to the total current assets? Remember, very important point, why? Because the change in the current assets minus the change in the current liability, in this example, current liabilities haven't changed haven't changed. So we want to know now how much is the change in the current assets, not including cash, where are they? Nine plus seven, how much is it guys? Anybody? 16. It's 16, is that right? So I'm expecting, oh, but says, here it says increase in working capital, it is 784. How did I get that number? Let's do it all over. I got confused. And you should be confused. Let's go. Transaction number one, we understood. Transaction number two, we understood. 650, we understood. We bought, we bought inventory. What happened when we bought inventory? What happened, guys? Our inventory went up. Our current asset went up. No change in working capital. Therefore, therefore, the whole change in cash is only 650. What happened after the fourth transaction? Pay attention carefully. Revenue went up by the amount we sold it. The profit is only 473 uh, because some of our inventory went down. And therefore the profit was just 483. 
Hold a second, what happened to the walking capital? Hey, walking capital, now I should go to the definition. How much inventory plus account receivable went up by 16? So let's go to the definition. How much is really current asset went up? Current asset went up by 16. Minus how much current liabilities went up? Let's go back again. Current liabilities, don't forget, it went up by 800. Everybody agree? Yes. yes. So before this transaction, it's true the inventory went up, but some of the inventory went to the customers. End result, if that's what happened this year, nothing else. Bottom line, my current assets went up only by 60. My current liabilities went up by 800. So let's write it down. Uh, let's see. Let's write it up. So minus 800. How much is together? Oh, sorry. That should be minus 784. Is that right? Am I right, guys? Why is it negative? Because we do current assets minus current liabilities. We get minus 784. But if you have a good eye and you see the way I define this line, it says minus increase in working capital. Increase in working capital should be positive. If it's negative, it will be minus minus. So that's why I get 784. 84. Now, this is technical. I want to get the essence of it. So I will not get confused. I can follow the description, the definition, and always it will work fine. But you won't get the real, the real stuff. The real things is let's think about it. What really happened? Why the cash have changed from zero to 1917? Let's look at that. One, we raised money of 650. 600 plus 50, 650 for financing activities. We raised cash. We had more cash for two reasons. We made a profit for 83. For 83, it's a profit. And that profit generated cash. Moreover, in addition to the profit, of 483, look at that. The inventory and account receivable went up only by 16, but the suppliers gave us a loan of 800. So on one hand, the supplier gave us a loan of 800, which we could have put in the cash, but the 800, part of which was about the inventory but the inventory is gone to the customer and they gave us cash. And part of which we gave a loan to other people. So you can think about that the following. We got a loan from the suppliers and we gave a loan to other people. So it cancel out. So out of that 800, we give other people cash as a loan. So 800 minus seven, that gave me 700, uh, 93, but part of which I really got it as an inventory, not as a cash from the supplier. So therefore from the 793, I should subtract another nine and that gives me exactly the 784. It's a little confusing. Please go over what I just said now, two, three, four, five times. And I'll go over that one more time. How did we get 1917? Very simple, that's the beauty of the statement of cash flow. We raised some money, 650. In addition, we made a profit, 483. In addition, and that's the beauty of the working capital. 
we got a loan of 800, but not only 800, we got it as a cash from the supply we didn't. The truth of the matter, we just got inventory. The 800 of the inventory, 791 we sold. So we got cash. And we kept only nine. In addition to the people we sold, not all of them paid in cash. Some of them get them loan, so it's canceled out. So if I look at those three together, nine, seven, 800, they are the working capital. 800 minus seven minus nine gives me the 784. What is the economic meaning of the 784? It's neck. How much current liabilities I got more than giving to others or buying current assets. I'll repeat that sentence. If I got more current liabilities, more than, than the current asset I'm buying or giving loans, short-term loans to others, that's increase, it's a decrease in working capital and that's risk cash in my bank account. It's a little hard one, but please go over it over and over and it will make a lot of sense. So what we saw so far, statement of cash flow, although it's really the whole thing, nothing we typed in, you see no number here doesn't come from the balance sheets. Everything is a, it's a difference, but it gives a lot of sense. And I will make another component with you guys one day in this software engineering to build up what it called the explicit or the direct method of the statement of cash flow. We will put here instead of working capital, we'll write inventory, we will write a account receivable, we will write account payable, and all the 784 will be broken down to three elements. That would be easier. But many companies do that way, by the way, and many companies do it what is called the indirect method. The one that I show here is the indirect method. And for corporate valuation, it's more interesting. And that's why I use that method, okay? But we will do another component and we put it here. And we'll make both of them work, change at the same time. That will be a nice exercise for you, for the other course, okay? All right, let's move on. Transaction number five, pay suppliers. What happened with pay suppliers? Our cash goes down and account receivable goes down. Hey, cash goes down, account receivable go, and account payables goes down. And what happened to the working capital? These transactions, let's say it again, I'm paying suppliers. My cash goes down, it doesn't affect current assets not including cash because it's affected the cash. It doesn't affect current asset minus not including cash. So in this equation, when I pay suppliers, when I pay suppliers, the current asset doesn't change. When I pay suppliers, current liabilities goes down substantially. So in fact, there's decrease in current and the working capital. Let's see that, okay? Let's see if I'm right. Click on it, beautiful. My cash went down, correct. My current liabilities went down substantially. Let's see what happened now. How much is my working capital? My working capital now is nine, nine plus seven is 16. But this time the current liability is only 32. So the increase in working capital will be only minus 60, minus minus, would give me 60. Oh, now I want to understand how the cash went up from zero to 1149. Let's go over that again. We raise money by issuing equity. We raise money by issuing or getting a loan from the bank or issuing bonds. We'll talk about it more specific in the future classes. But for now, we took a loan, we raised equity. But what happened in the operation? Our profit 
didn't change by paying the suppliers. It's 43. But this time, the cash didn't go up that much because we took some of the cash we paid the suppliers. So the working capital is really only 16. And that's why from operation, we have only 499 before we paid the suppliers. Okay. By the way, if you click on this little X, you will remove that transaction. I removed that transaction. Before paying the suppliers, had the money, while I screwed it up, I think. Let me restart it. Sorry, I screwed up. I don't know why I did the whole things. It should work the way I said. So we'll check why it doesn't do that. It should have done it, okay? And I'll do it again, sorry. I'll do only the first three. Okay, this X should really do the reverse. I would double check why it doesn't work the way it should. But that's for a different course, yeah? Before I paid the suppliers, okay? And I saw, yeah, okay. Before I paid the suppliers, he really was a source of finance. When I pay him, my cash goes down. No surprise. That payment to the supplier, it really is kind of usage of the money. That's why instead of 784, I have much lower number because I paid some of the money I collected for the customers, of my customers, I paid the suppliers. So I have less cash in my bank account. So that's why after I click on this one, I pay them only 768, okay? Now I have only 16 in the working capital. So basically let's think about it. What is the major element for the increase in cash? It's raising money by taking a loan and issuing equity and making profit. And some of which is getting a little loan from the supplier now, only 32, because I paid them most of the loan they gave me. Part of the 32 I did use to increase the inventory and have account receivable, 16. So 32 minus that 16, it's, it's giving me 16. So how much, how is this cash generated? Simple by raising money, profit, and 16 from transactions of a short-term assets and a short-term liabilities. This shouldn't be a substantial amount in most of businesses. It really should be around very small number, unless it's a big company deal with a lot of inventory. If you look at the high-tech companies, that should be really almost zero, very small. We don't buy a lot. We don't have a lot of suppliers. We don't hold a lot of inventory. Okay, but some companies that have a lot of inventory it might fluctuate, but that shouldn't be the major source. This should be the major source, net income. This is, could be a source, okay? Raising money from investors. By the way, you notice, I always call, when I raise money from the owner or I take a loan, both of them are source, both of them are investors, both of them giving money to the company. That's why I call them investors, okay? That's the next transaction. Let's move on. Next transaction, we buy property, plant and equipment. By the way, notice paying suppliers had no effect on income statement, none so, what, so effect. Therefore, no effect on the net income. The next transaction is very similar, has no effect on income statement because we're just buying properties. What happened then? What is the effect? The effect is in the long-term assets. We use cash, it's reduced the cash. So total assets didn't change. Total liabilities didn't change. Total equity plus liability didn't change. We only had a decline in cash. Oh, hold a second. Decline in cash, that means this number is lower now. Hey, that means that whatever we used as a profit, whatever profit we got, whatever increase in the working capital or decrease in the working capital, together gave us almost 500. Out of which we took this money and we went and bought machinery. 
That's why the cash went, didn't go up as much as before. We used, out of the 499, we used 400 to buy machinery. So only 99 have left. And the 99 I'm adding to the 650 that I raised from the investor. That's why I have only 749. Why did I have 749? Very simple. I raised 650 from the investor and out of the net profit plus the working capital, 499, I used 400, okay, and 99 left. The 99 plus 650 give me the increase in the cash. Beautiful. This is giving meaning. What happened all the time? Why the cash? is only 499. Now I understand it very clear. It brackets down very nice. From operation, I generated 500. Pay attention, the profit was 483, but I, I added a little bit of working capital. That was available. I can invest it. I can do something with it. What did I do with this money? I put it in property plan and equipment. Property plan and equipment called capital expenditure. When you spend on buying machinery for the company, you're buying buildings, you're buying trucks, all the stuff that will stand for long term, those are capital expenditures. So the change in the property plan and equipment is capital expenditure. I will talk about the word net in a minute later on. And I will talk about depreciation later on. It's very important accounts. But for now, we just bought those machinery. They are new, have no effect on the income statement. It does have effect on the cash. If it has the effect on the cash, this number always equal to this number. We have net income plus change in the working capital, give me 499. I use part of the money. Therefore, I have less in the cash. That's what this transaction has done. Have effect on the balance sheet. Effect on the balance sheet should have effect on the cash flow. But it doesn't have effect on the income statement. Let's look at the next one. Pay interest. Oh, let's look at that. Pay interest. Remember, it's I'm paying money to the bank because I got a loan from them. It's going to reduce my net income. Remember from last time? It's going to reduce my cash and it's going to reduce my profit. So let's see what happened. And then we understand how it or affect the statement of cash flow. So let's click on it. Pay interest. I click on it. Pay interest. Yeah, indeed. You see, minus 130. My profit went down. Only 353. By the way, now there is a difference between gross profit and net profit and net income. By the way, paying interest, it's not affecting the operating profit. This is really bottom line, operating or gross profit. Some people call it a gross profit. Some people, by the way, it really better call it gross profit because operating profit really is the next category. So gross profit is bottom line is revenue minus direct cost to generate that revenue. So if I'm buying and selling shoes, it's how much money I got for my customers mm -hmm. minus how much those shoes cost me. We put some depreciation there and I will talk about it later on. Why depreciation should be there. But for now, this is the major things about gross profit. So gross profit in this case, it's 43, but the net profit, I should really subtract also the interest to get to the net profit. We'll see other things in, the, in, in a minute. For now, my net profit and income, it's a much lower number. Always look at that. This number goes always to here. But that number also goes to another place. It goes to here. It's the same number. 353 always goes to retained earning. 353 goes to the first line in here. It's not coincident. As we go and we talk about it over and over, you understand it deeply. That's the link between those three statements, no coincidence. 
if you want to take my business intelligence course and I spend a session on how you do a multidimensional queue for accounting, all those links will make much more sense. They immediately becomes to be right. Okay, now it's a little hard to see it, but at least pay attention to it. And over time, as definitely after you take my business intelligence course, that will make a lot of sense. Okay, for now, we see this number, this number, and this number are the same number, no coincidence. And this number always end up here. There is, we will see when we talk about dividend, is the difference will be the dividend, but for, not for now. We'll talk about that later on. For now, what happened? What happened? We paid interest. My profit went down. Oh, if my profit went down, that means I really don't have enough money to invest the 400. I want to buy the equipment. If I didn't pay the interest, I had the money to pay for the equipment, but now I don't. So if I took 369, I don't have enough money to finance it. So why the money come to finance these buildings or this machinery? It has to come from the money I raised from the investor. Remember, I raised 650. So why the cash went up only by 619? Very simple. Very simple now. I raised 650. I made profit of 369, but I used 400. That difference, 400 minus 369, I'm short. I don't have enough cash. How much is that, by the way? 31. Hey, 31 has to come from somewhere. I use the money that I collected from the investors. That's why only 619, which is exactly 300, 650 minus the 31 I had to use for buying the equipment, it's, I had to use it. So that's why the cash went up only by 619. It didn't even go up by the amount I raised from the, 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 the investors. I used part of the money from the investors to buy those 400 machinery. That's the beauty of the statement of cash flow showing you immediately what's really happening in the company. In the company, we raised 650. We made a profit, only 353. We had some change in the working capital. That's why the cash was 369. We invested in the, in the company, we bought equipment, but we didn't have enough because the profit wasn't enough to buy all of that. Therefore, we had to use money raised from the investors. We used 31, therefore the cash went up only by 619. That's the beauty. That's why this component is so valuable. Showing you all the links between all. By the way, this transaction affected everything. It's affected the balance sheet. It affected the income statement. It's affected the statement of cash flow. By the way, everything that affect the balance sheets and though it doesn't cancel out in the working capital, it will affect the statement of cash flow. That's also a true statement, okay? As you go along and you hear that statement, I will say it again. Any transactions you do that has effect on the balance sheet, which doesn't cancel out because it's affecting only working capital, it will have effect on the statement of cash flow, okay? unless you go in the, indirect, in the direct method. We're doing the indirect method and the, any things that wash out in the working capital will not have an effect as we saw before. Let's go to the next transactions. One more, okay? Hey, by the way, we saw that number eight, it's just like number four because we're buying subsidiary. The choice of the matter and as we go, when we get to the merger and acquisitions, I will talk about it more. We're buying now and we're showing our purchase not as a consolidated statement. In the consolidated, it will look differently. Now we said whatever we pay, that's what we show in the balance sheet, like buying equipment. So when I click on it, no surprise, 
my cash went down by another 300. Hey, but as the 400 went up, I have another asset went up. So what is the transaction is all about? Cash went down by 300. And the subsidiary, the another asset went up. So the total haven't changed. Total asset didn't change. Total equity didn't change, plus uh, liabilities. Anything in the income statement? No, nothing. But there is a change. Definitely cash went down and the capital expenditure went up. Not only I bought buildings, I also bought another assets called company. I bought another company. So how much did I invest? I didn't invest only 400 as before. I invested 700. Oh, now I'm really troubled. If I had only profit 369, wasn't enough for the 400, definitely it's not enough also for buying a subsidiary. The money must come from the money I raised from the investors. So the increase in the cash, it's much shorter than the amount I collected from the investor of 650. I start using the money I raised or the money I took as a loan, start using that money to buy assets for the company. That's what companies do. They don't just raise money to sit there in the bank account. I take a loan from the bank, not just to put it in the bank again. I take a loan to buy machinery. I take a loan to buy other company. I take a loan to buy buildings, to buy land and all of that stuff. All of those are investments. The more I buy, the more money I will need. And where that money can come from, or from profit, or from the investors. If it doesn't come from either one of them, where is that going to come? Nowhere, unless I had cash in the beginning of the year. That's the beauty of the standard of cash flow. Let's do the next one, okay? Next one is invest in, in, in intangible. We said that what is intangible is when I buy a, a patent. Intangible means it's not like machine that I see it. It's something to know, it's like know-how. I buy something that helped me to be more productive. It's not expense, it's like buying any other asset. So if I click on it, it'll be just like buying machines. So I click on it, again, you see, I have the 120 right here, another asset. So the assets went up, the long-term assets went up, but the cash went down more even. Same effect, investments will go up more. I invested more. So how did I come to 820? Very simple. I bought machinery and I bought subsidiary and I bought a patent. If you add them up, you get 820. No surprise, it's exactly this one. So the 800, it's exactly the difference between 400 minus zero, 300 minus zero, 120 minus zero. If you take all of them together, it's 820 minus zero. It's exactly this minus 820. Again, I wasn't lying in the beginning of the session. So, but that money has to come from somewhere. I had some profit and I have investors give me money. That's why my cash is going down and down and down because I'm using it. That's why I have only 199. By the way, it's always the same. 199, 199, no surprise. 353, always 353, always 353. That's the beauty, always there. Then you know you're not making any mistake. Okay, let's do the next one. Okay, next one, number 10. Sales and marketing. That's just another expense, like the interest. We're spending on Michael and Jeremiah. When Jeremiah have bought the program of doing the, the clips, he spent on marketing. If they will buy ads in YouTube or whatever, that's marketing. Okay? When a company buying ads in the TV, it's marketing, it's reducing profit. Money goes to generate revenue, okay? That's what we hope, 
So if I click on that, the 110 should show up in the income statement and also will show up in the balance sheets because we're paying cash. We're assuming we're paying cash. So let's click on it. Again, pay attention. Now it's really nice to talk about it. Revenue minus cost of goods sold gave me gross profit. That's what we call direct profit or gross profit. And really, how much we collect, we sold to the customers minus how much it cost us. That's gross part. Now, we had to subtract. You know, that revenue genera didn't generate just because people know about that store. We have to advertise it. And that expense, we put in a different category. And after we subtract that category as well, we call the profit operating profit. Very, very important category. Operating profit, also known as earning before interest and taxes. I repeat it. It's a very important acronym. Earning before interest and taxes. Okay? So I got 373. From that, I subtract the interest. See, it's by the title, it's earning before interest and taxes. So I need to subtract interest. Later on, we'll see taxes as well. And then we get to the net income. Net income always goes to here. Net income always goes to here after interest, after marketing. And then now let's analyze. We have less profit. Therefore, I have less money to invest the 820. I should give in more, using more the money that I was raising. I guess that's why I have much less cash. Okay, let's move on. Next transaction. General administrative, very similar transaction. Some companies combine them together. When we look at the real financial statement, you will see some companies combine those two together. But I like to separate them. But the effect is very similar. When I click on that 75,000, pay attention, it's the same place. They are between the gross profit and operating profit. So I subtract sales and marketing, I subtract general administrative. What kind of an expense is that? I pay salaries to the managers. I pay rent on the buildings that the managers are working. I pay rent for the buildings that all my sales and marketing people are working. Usually it's not rent for buildings that I use, if I manufacture shoes and I have different building to manufacturing, the depreciation will be here. But that's a certain thing. I don't get into that right now. Very important, by the way. It's not, it's not important. I just don't want to put too much on this session. For now, let's just distinguish. We don't have any depreciation, whatever. Sales and marketing, general administrative, salaries, rent of the buildings. Et cetera, et cetera. So those two are the two subtractions to get from gross profit to the operating profit. Again, we now have really much less cash because our profit is not really as high as we thought. We didn't, for, we didn't really subtract all the other expenses. When we subtract all the expenses, we realize that our net income is only 168. Amazing, it always goes there. Amazing, this one, equity and liability always will be equal to total assets. It will always will be that way, okay? Let's go next transaction, okay? Invest in commercial paper. By the way, we said this is a very simple transaction. Why? We take part of the cash and we just buy some government bonds. That's the simplest way to put it. You could have bought very liquid stock of, let's say, Amazon. Let's say this is a small company and they have some cash. And they think the stock of Amazon will go up. So they say, let's put some money there. I wouldn't advise it. Amazon is secure, but it's not as secure as government bonds. Most of the time when you talk about commercial papers, you talk about very solid kind of investment that it's quite secure. When you buy Uganda, you buy American, you buy German, you buy Brazilian, not Brazilian, I don't know how much, not that secure. Uganda won't be that secure. But if you buy 
U.S. government bonds most likely it's not going to go down. It's going to go up. So it'll make some money. Okay, that's commercial papers. But there's many kinds, and that's a whole special topic. You shouldn't really spend too much time on that because you are not an accountant. But definitely, if you study accounting and you become to be a CPA, you should really know that much deeper. Okay. For now, we're just saying we take part of the 15, 1400, okay, and we're going to invest in commercial papers, 6,000. So we click on it. Yeah, it went down by six. And we have another category. By the way, this is a pretty cool. Cash went down, current assets went up. It doesn't include cash. So the net current asset didn't change, but the current assets not including cash did change. So, bottom line, what happened here? My cash form operations, okay, it's even, okay, went even further down because I don't really have any more. The, the working capital increased only by 10. Why? Nine plus seven, 16, plus six, 22. And the, and the current liability is 32. 32 minus 22 give me only 10 now. It used to be 16 before. So cash from operation, I told you this really should be around zero usually, not really that big number. So my, my really cash from operation would be very close to my net income unless it's a special type of industry. So 178, I take the investment, the, the money I got from the investors, with the cash I generate from operations, a lot of that I invested in the machinery, in buying another company, buying patent, and I only have left with only eight. Eight is always the same here and here, no surprise, beautiful. Let's go to the next one, okay? That's we have 13, accounting for, account for depreciation. Remember what I explained what depreciation is about? Depreciation is when the value of the assets, when we bought it, let's say at the beginning of the year, those machines were really new. The end of the year, those machines probably worth less. In accounting classes, you will talk a lot about how you should account for depreciation. For our example, we're going to do it short. We just, I just tell you it's about 10%. In future classes, I'll talk a little bit more about it. For now, we say, let's say the value of the machine went down by 10%. That means we really kind of, by using those machines or using that building, you know, we really have to replace them one day. So our profit is not really 168, it should be 40 less because we lost the value of the building or the value of the machines. So we should subtract depreciation here and we really have less assets. So although we invested 400, by the end of the year, we have less than 400, we have 360 of it. So let's click on that transaction and see what happens. I clicked on it. That's a hard transaction. Yeah, income statement did have got affected. I have 40 less. My profit is only 128 now. Okay, but see, pay attention. Very interesting. This is a really hard one. This is very, very hard one. Please look at that differently. My net profit always will be the same here. But pay attention. What does it say here? Net capital expenditure. I mentioned the word net before. When I do in statement of cash flow and don't want to get confused, I always, always take the net assets. It's really is 780. The 780 in the balance sheet, it's after I subtract what is known as accumulated depreciation. In next sessions or more other sessions, I will talk about the difference between accumulated to depreciation. They, are, they look similar, but they are different. This is accumulated. This is depreciation. For the first year, they are the same. So I subtract it. So net total assets went up only by 780. Yeah, 780. 
But pay attention, this is a very hard point. I will say it even twice. Pay attention, then I still keep 128, the net income, the same things as here. I put net capital expenditure always to be the difference in the long-term asset, the net. But pay attention, there is a line here called depreciation. And there is a line here that I call depreciation. What is it? In the, here we go. You see that? It's very funny. This one is a positive and this one is a negative. Bottom line, bottom line. When I accounted for depreciation, the cash haven't changed. Let me do the whole thing all over. Do the whole thing all over. Bingo, bingo, bingo. Bingo, bingo, bingo. I hope I won't get confused. Number eight, number nine. We're not this sophisticated in the future. Bingo, bingo, bingo. How much do we have? Eight, before accounting for the depreciation. When I account for the depreciation, pay attention what happened in the balance sheet. Pay attention to what happened in the balance sheet. I click on it. In the balance sheet, this is, didn't change. So the bottom line in the statement of cash flow didn't change. What did change? The net assets went down by 40. And the profit went down by 40. That's why the balance stayed the same. The total assets went down by 40 and the equity and liability went down by 40 but the cash didn't change. If the change in the cash didn't change, okay, pay attention why. Net income went down by 40, but also net capital went down by 40, no change on the cash. But we adding depreciation just to make it a little more meaningful. I'm adding depreciation here is because the depreciation really didn't change how much cash I changed from operation. I still really generated 178. I really did. Moreover, how much cash did I use to buy machinery? I did use 400 plus 300 plus what? 120. The 40 didn't really affect how much money I needed to buy the machinery and to buy the com company and to buy the intangibles. So that's why we add the 40 here and we add subtracted here. It really doesn't have any effect in the bottom line, but it does make cash from investing more meaningful. We did spend 820 on buying equipment, buying subsidiaries, buying patents. We did generate cash 178 from operation. What will happen in the future, we'll have to spend more on capital expenditure just to replace another equipment, but that's for another class, okay? Uh, I think there was another transactions. I don't know if I put it here. I don't think I put it. In here, I should add the 14, okay? We will in another class, in a software engineering class. But let's look at transaction. I think I have a description here on dividend. 14, by the way, look at that. The company distributed dividend to shareholders. What does it mean dividend? When the company is really giving cash, giving cash to the owner. Remember the owner gave 50,000 to the company. What the company has done, they gave some interest, some interest to the bondholders, to the bank. The bank got 130 because they gave them 600. What did the shareholders got this year? The company made profit? Yes, they did. 
The company did make a profit. They made 128. So the shareholders come to the company and say, hey, give us some money. You know, this is a beautiful example. Why didn't I, put, I know now why I didn't put it right here. Because it's a little hard to put it here. Not as a really hard. It's a very sophisticated transaction. Secondly, this transaction doesn't belong to, to the first two. It doesn't really belong directly. Let me say it's the, the most correct. It's not part of the income statement. Distributing dividend, it is not part of the income statement. It's eventually part of the balance sheet, but there is another statement which I did not put here. And we will do it in the future. In the framework, in the framework for software engineering, we will build up another plugin for another statement. A statement that try, try to explain what happened to the equity. And distributing dividend, what the end of the day will do, it will it's like using part of the net income and giving it to the owner. It is not subtracting, it doesn't reduce the net income. So the net income will stay here. And that will be somewhere here that it will supposed to reduce the net income by the amount of the dividend and whatever left will go to the retained earning. That's a special schedule. I didn't want to put it here in the first round because I would get more confused to show four of them. But it really is in the nutshell, it will explain the cash should go down by 15, the net income will go down by 15, and therefore the net income will go down by 15. How it will be affecting the statement of cash flow? Very simple, the net income will go down by 15. And for the future, when I will go into that, when I talk about corporate valuation, I focus on that much more. I don't want to get you confused here. And the fourth statement is really worth to spend when you know this one very well. When you come to the statement of cash, when you study corporate valuation, we add the fourth statement, and then we explain the meaning of dividend deeper, and then we start the corporate valuation. Okay, so for now, all what you need to know that transaction number 15 does not reduce net income, but it's explained why we break the chain that the 128 will not show here again anymore. It will show only 128 minus the 15 because it's distributed to the shareholder. The cash will go down by 15, by the way, the cash will be negative. Hey, why it will it be negative? The company doesn't have enough money. So they will go into overdraft. And that will be mismanagement, really. There will be a fight, usually. Hey, how are you distributing money that you don't have? But I have profit. And that's for different sessions. For now, we want to focus on the statement of cash flow as we did. OK? And we covered really almost every element. I will just say one more thing. As the number net income, we'll keep it here, okay? In the net income here. But everybody will say it's not true. You use dividend, so you really should account for it, okay? So this number shouldn't be 128. So the way we'll do it in different in the future, we do the same. As it goes with 128 minus 15, we come to here. What we'll do, 128 minus 15, and I will say net income after dividend, but we'll kind of fix it. And we will fix it, we will add back the dividend here, and we'll subtract it in the end. And we will understand it much deeper in a different class, different theories when we talk about corporate valuation. Very important to know everything we studied so far in the last three sessions by heart is the foundation.
for the future. Okay, that's concluding statement of cash flow for now. There's one more things that I haven't talked about is taxes. And I just mentioned it. Taxes is very simple. It's like any other expense. Let's say the company have bought, bought uh, paid 10,000 taxes. Okay, we should really add here another transaction of taxes. I think there is, maybe I didn't put a button. I think there is a transaction 14, if I recall, but we need to add button there for it. But it could be also a good exercise. Now, I didn't put taxations, taxes, we'll add taxes, we should. But let's say the tax was, uh, let's say five, just for the simplicity. Very simple. The taxes will go up here. You can do it by hand, by the way. That's the beauty about this component. It will reduce also cash to three. Everything will balance. But it would be nice to add another button. Company paid tax five. And then it will reduce the profit, makes sense. So it will affect the income statement. It will affect the balance sheet because I have less profit, okay? And having less profit, oh, I should write minus here, sorry about it. My mistake, 123, 123, that should be, this should be 123, there's an error here. Net income before taxes, this is an error. When I will you write it down, please? This should one will be exactly the 123, there's an error here I, I discovered. By the way, there is a button here. You can clear everything, and that will run all of them. Now it's everything is fine. Let's see if I was right. Let's put minus five here. Maybe I had. Yeah, this is correct. This is that's really net income should be one twenty three, and this one should be also one twenty three. This is wrong. Okay, and the minus five yeah. should really affect also the cash. Okay. So we should really fix it. So please let me know and we will fix it in a different class. Okay, that's concluding. That's a hard one, by the way. That's the hardest class in accounting, by the way. One of the hardest, I should say. Questions? Michael, are you surviving? You doing good, guys? Let me see you guys. Michael, you're doing good? It's hard. You should yes. watch this video at least three times. Daniel, you're doing good? Mildred, you're doing good? Yes. Patricia? Yeah. Jeremiah? Yes. Hanno? Yes, doctor. Good. Yes, doctor. Please watch this video at least three times. Doctor. Yeah. Go ahead. I can you hear you. Of the decrease in working capital. Yes. You talked of the decrease in working capital, but the, uh, the decrease in working capital. See, the, the, the increase decrease in working capital always will be. In fact, you can look at the current assets, subtract for me the cash, you get 22. That's the current assets without cash, correct? Yes. That's the working capital. And you take the current liabilities. So if you take 22 minus 32, you will get 10 minus 10. And minus minus will give you the 10. That's the, by the way, one of my things that I always like, you can leverage it if you want. You can take, by the way, you can make, you can make another plugin, it would be very really nice. That would be a good exercise in, in the class for framework for software engineering. Why don't you make balance sheets that you take all the current assets without the cash, make a new category, call it working capital. You put cash, working capital, you take this line, current liabilities, move it to the top. Don't put it in the liabilities. Leave liabilities only long-term liabilities. 
and make the current assets to be current asset plus working capital or cash plus working capital. And then you'll have cash, working capital, and then you have long-term assets and you'll have only long-term liabilities. And that will be much cleaner. And then you can see that working capital, it's kind of a net current asset. It really is net current asset. Why I call it net current asset? Because it takes all the current assets and subtract current liabilities. That's what working capital is. What happened when I invest 400? Capital expenditures, negative. What happened if I buy inventory, my current assets will go up. That will be negative. That's a, really a usage. And I will talk about it more in the next session. I just don't want to put too much in one session. Okay, but this is really the heart of statement of cash flow. So please go over this session at least three times. If we spend an hour, an hour and a half, you should spend at least five hours on this session watching it over and over every transactions. It is hard, but there's nothing more that I should contribute. It's a hard work on your part and knowing it by heart. And then we can move on. What we're gonna do in next and session, again, a very short okay. video, and we will talk about a analysis. We're moving from accounting, we just finished accounting, then we're moving to financial statement analysis. We will talk about vertical and horizontal. Okay. Yeah, one, one sec. We will talk about vertical and horizontal statements analysis. Yeah, go ahead. One more. Go ahead, Brenda. Who was someone wanted to ask? Again, question? how are uh, how is the general and administrative? See, the general administrative as the sales and marketing, both of those reducing the cash and they're also reducing the net income. So in the balance sheet place, the reductions of the sales and marketing and general administrative, they're reducing profit. So reducing profit, it's reducing really the equity. And that's equivalent to reducing the cash because the cash is going down and the profit going down. And then the way you see it here, it really is the net income goes down. That's why the cash goes down. That's really beautiful. But you really have to go over it several times to really comprehend it deeply. More questions, guys? I'll give you more time to questions next time. You really should go over it over and over and then we'll spend some time on review, okay? Good. Okay. More questions, guys, before we break?